Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today, with these brand new ones to watch cards entering FIFA 22 Ultimate Team, I want to talk about how you can trade with these cards on a weekly basis, on weekends when they have games, and even sometimes during the week when they have midweek games as well. Basically, it all revolves around what these cards do in real life what these players do in real life and that's why it is so much fun with these ones to watches because they again are live items that upgrade now this year ones to watches have a brand new um feature called the wins to watch upgrade where they get a plus one inform upgrade if their team wins five games out of their next 10 of course beginning after october 1st which is when these cards were released so what i want to talk about today is again how can you trade with these cards how it's risky to trade with them sometimes but also very, very fun and very profitable, especially if it is a prolific player that catches a role or catch, catches a role in real life and has some really good games and gets in form and then gets some special cards in FIFA. It's very, very fun to trade with these items. So again, this is the ones to watch team one that was released a couple days ago inside of FIFA 22. Now, if you look at a, you look at this team, there's actually a decent amount of defenders in here, which when you talk about ones to watch, Defenders are usually not the best ones to trade with. Attackers, and especially attackers and midfielders, players that are more attacking in general, have way better trading fluctuations on this game with ones to watch cards. Because if you think about it, they're live items, right? And who's scoring goals and getting team of the weeks more often than not? Attackers are, right? And at least who is more prolific and more seen as a player that could potentially get an upgrade? attackers so when i look at this team i just want to take you through some of the things that i see right off the bat some of the players that i like and i know are going to fluctuate now of course this is only team one we're going to get three more players today on sunday and uh or on sunday when sunday comes and um we already have a huge list of players that are not released yet that we can talk about and, and you know know that we're going to see and also some ones to watch cards that have not been released yet so i want to talk through all of that today but specifically even right now this weekend as some of these cards have games i bought some Mollins tonight right because these cards were fresh into packs and i know that tomorrow he has a game i'm recording this on friday night heading into saturday but you might be on Saturday night right now looking at Grealish or Alaba who have games on Sunday and you might be thinking, hmm, or maybe even Hakimi. You might be here thinking, man, these cards prices, if if Grealish if, is starting for Manchester City, he's probably going to rise up because people buy these cards as they head into the game because they want the player and they expect the player to have a good game and then they sell after if the player doesn't. So let's start talking about some of these fluctuations on some of these cards so let's talk about Grealish for example right Grealish wants to watch one of my favorites right a big transfer of course to Manchester City a big fee and a very hyped up player a lot of a lot of eyes are on Grealish right to perform well at City and uh for him to score goals right a prolific attacking type player in this game now one thing to note let's say Grealish against it with his uh his game this weekend actually I'm going to take a look at sofa score and pull the game up because on Sunday, Grealish and Manchester City play against Liverpool, right? Let's say, since this is a big game, there's probably going to be an inform that comes out of it. EA likes to give the special cards out of these big games. Let's say Grealish uh, scores two goals, right? When Grealish scores two goals, you're going to see one of two things happen. Well, number one, his price is going to rise up pregame as you head into the game. People are going to buy his card because they expect him to do well. They expect him to score goals and maybe to get an inform. If you buy ahead of the game, you're always going to have the best profits, but that's where the most risk is. So let's say Grealish is 40,000 coins when the game starts, when the game kicks off. Let's say he scores a goal, right? Jack Grealish scores a goal. What is going to happen to his card? It's going to shoot up in price because people are going to go on to FIFA and buy it thinking that, oh man, he scored a goal. He might get an inform, a Team of the Week card this coming Wednesday when Team of the Week is released that would upgrade this once to watch item to an 86, right? His inform would be an 86. That would upgrade this ones to watch to an 86 as well. That's where the hype with these cards is. And that's how you can make coins off of them. So pick some players that you want to watch. And especially if it's, it's an attacking player, when we get into team two for ones to watch or the mini releases that are coming on the weekends, the best players that you're going to want to watch to trade with on the weekly are going to be cards that are consistently or players that are consistently starting, consistently playing and, and scoring goals, right? Or at least getting goals and assists and a team that is doing well 
as well, right? Some of these bigger teams like Manchester City, Manchester United, Dortmund, some of these teams that are performing really well on their own level as a team level because that's going to, you know, bring their price up and that's going to make them fluctuate more in value. So again, that's kind of what happens. All right, back to our example. Jack Grealish scores a goal, goes from 40,000 coins up to 50,000 coins. You now have the option. Can I sell right there at the increased price because he scored his goal? Or do I hold out for more? Usually after the first goal, the player rises up a little bit. But if you score a second goal, or if you, let's say it's maybe a defender and the match is going further on and the clean sheet is good and that defender maybe scores a goal, you know, that price is going to skyrocket. But a second goal usually locks in or a pretty sure chance at a team of the week for an attacker, unless they have many, you know, special cards already. So you would look at this Jack Grealish to probably go from like 50K upwards, maybe towards 60K or something like that, right? That's just the example. Then you have another option. Do I sell right then? Or do I sell later when he could potentially gets the actual card and gets the upgrade on Wednesday, right? So this is the scenario that we always have. We have a card that rises in price on the weekend, right? We have a card that rises in price on the weekend. And I actually want to show you a graph of what happens when, when something like this goes on. We're going to take a look back to last year, FIBA 21 with Gareth Bale and Timo Werner. I'm going to show you some of these graphs, right? Timo Werner. This is a card right here that had a he had a spectacular weekend right here. His card price, he came into packs, all right? Wants to watch Timo Werner. Had a game. I believe he scored a goal for Chelsea or scored two goals in the game. His price went up all the way to 840k. You can see that he peaked. He went from 600k to 877,000 coins. Did not get an inform. Dropped all the way off to 676,000 coins. But Timo Werner kept playing decently well, getting goal scoring opportunities, and you see his price continue to rise up, peaking on Saturdays and on the weekends, right? There's a weekly like trend and fluctuation with these cards. You can see he's usually lowest after the weekend on like Monday or Tuesday, 720K. What does he go to the next weekend? 788,000 coins. Drops back down to 750, goes back up the next weekend to 890, right? If a prolific striker, prolific, prolific player, in a wants to watch card like Grealish or like Malin. If Holland is hurt, Malin's going to get opportunities, right? Or maybe like Cristiano Ronaldo, when these prices hit their low points and, and kind of hit a, a base price, when they have games on the weekend, they are going to drift up. And that's where you can do the weekly trading with some of these cards. You could buy Grealish on, let's say, after a Sunday game, Sunday night into Monday, his card's probably going to be pretty cheap. After he's out of packs, you could buy his card, wait until the next weekend, and probably sell it for more because he would be going into another game. People would be buying his card, anticipating a good performance, and uh, that would make his price go up. So that's kind of the weekly trend trading with these cards, right? Grealish, let's say, this here's our other scenario, right? Grealish scored a goal. We did that one. Let's talk about whether Grealish did not score a goal. He does not score a goal. His price is going to drop off after the game. It's going to get cheaper. And then from there, you're going to be able to buy in that card, use it in your team, wait until the next week's game, or maybe if he has a midweek game, wait until then, and then sell it after it goes up. So that's kind of the weekly fluctuation for a lot of these ones to watch cards is they get expensive right before the game or on game day, and then they drop afterwards with a performance that is not worthy of an inform. Now let's talk about some quick investing tips with these cards. Back to our you know scenario here with Grealish or even Cristiano Ronaldo. It's probably not going to work that well with Ronaldo since he's on such a high budget, but it, it might, who knows, right? But let's say, again, let's say Ronaldo scores a goal, right? Ronaldo's 3.1 million coins. Let's say, theoretically, he goes up to 3.5 mil, he, or, or Grealish goes from 35,000 coins up to 45,000 coins. He, let's say they score two goals. Their price is up a lot. What's going to happen is people that bought that card before the game People that brought, bought that card just to take the profit are going to start selling. That is a common thing and a common trend that you see with ones to watches. So Grealish will go up during the game and he'll actually drop off after the game, still be at an inflated price, but it'll drop off a little bit as people who see the profit and they bought the card beforehand want to sell that card. Then there's an opportunity to buy in that window. So basically the card is here, it spikes, and then it drops off a little bit. There's an opportunity to buy in that window before he continues to go up as people buy up that card, expecting it to get upgraded on Wednesday with team of the week. So that is another thing to watch out for. It's very tricky to time that sometimes. 
and you have to make sure that the drop off is big enough. But that is a way you can trade with ones to watches as well after buying post game. Honestly, buying post game, whether it's a good game or a bad game for that player, can be profitable with ones to watches. So that is kind of like the weekly trading. Now let's talk about some quick investing, right? One thing you can do is know the prices of these cards when the game is going on. Let's say Grealish scores a goal. Boom, you instantly see that goal scored or get a notification. I like to use the website SofaScore uh, because SofaScore or I think LiveScore is another app. These websites or apps on your mobile device are so fast. They're so fast. You can get these scores, get these notifications and go and buy the player. And before a lot of other people maybe uh, get a notification or watch it, especially if they're on a live stream, they will hear about the goal and you will get there, buy the card and you can buy the card before it spikes up in price and then sell it as it spikes up as people get on the game to buy the card off of that hype, right? So a lot of this ones to watch stuff is based off of hype and the potential upgrade, right? So that's a big thing that I would recommend. Buy the card fast as the player spikes up in price. That'd be something to watch out for. Now on Wednesdays, when these cards get team of the weeks, a lot of times what happens is the cards will rise back up into a Wednesday. Let's say Grealish has a two goal weekend this weekend. His card is going to spike and then it's going to drop a tiny bit and then it's going to rise even more into Wednesday. But a lot of times what happens is when that new team of the week comes out and when the ones to watch card gets upgraded, most times those cards actually drop, right? Because so many people have bought this card hoping for the upgrade. It actually drops after that time frame instead of going further up. So that's one thing to kind of remember. A lot of times when I'm holding a once to watch card, if I buy it before the game, I sell it during the game. And if I buy it after the game, I sell it before team of the week on Wednesday as it's again, selling into the hype of that upgrade and not actually selling after the upgrade happens. That's some really, really key info, right? Sell into the hype for a lot of these ones to watch cards. That's really, really key. I can't stress that enough, actually. So that's kind of how you can trade with ones to watches, whether you're buying in a game or whether you're buying on a weekly fluctuation for these cards. Now, one new aspect with this wins to watch upgrade this year is that some of these cards, as they get closer and closer and closer to that upgrade and to the five wins out of their next 10 games, Kind of how we see headliner cards get upgraded after two wins in a row or three wins in a row. They start to kind of creep up in price. What you're going to see is as a club gets three to four wins, what you're going to see is these ones to watch cards. Let's say United go out and win their next three games. Ronaldo's price is probably going to start creeping up a little bit. If he hasn't gotten an inform already, his price is probably going to start to go up because people are expecting that plus one upgrade on that card. And it's just like we had with headliner cards and with the what if cards last year in FIBA 21. Since it's a wins upgrade, what you actually see is a lot of times the card will be at its highest value. It'll be at its highest point on like just before they get that last win. Because what happens is people, again, just like with team of the weeks and the upgrades that happen on Wednesday, if you're expecting this ones to watch card to get upgraded, people will buy it wait for the upgrade. And then when the upgrade happens, they'll sell because that's when they expect the card to go up. But in reality, there's more people selling at that time than buying. So it creates more supply than demand. So if you got a Ronaldo and Manchester United have won four wins and it's an investment for you, or let's say Dortmund are on four wins, Malin's card is up like 20K in price. I would take the cash, right? I would take the cash. Yes, a plus one in form upgrade is very nice and it is a nice upgrade. But the safe route is to take the cash and sell in the hype. And that is the big, big, big tip with a lot of these ones to watches is sell in the hype. Now, of course, you have to still maintain and you still have to know regular and general market trends with these ones to watch cards as they're on the game too. Like obviously when there's a big promo coming or when there's an area of panic selling on the game, People will sell off these ones to watch cards just like normal cards would when they panic sell any other items or sell their teams inside of the game. There's going to be panic selling on these cards. So these cards are going to be great to trade with throughout the next couple of months because of that live nature to them, right? They have that live aspect where they could upgrade at almost any time based on a player performance. So that is one thing that makes these ones to watch cards very special. They got a dynamic image and a card design, which makes them, of course, very sought after as well. So it's going to be very curious to see which ones to watch items 
are the ones this year that are the most hyped. I think Hakimi is going to have a lot of hype. Of course, Ronaldo and Messi with some of the biggest ones to watch players we've ever had inside of this game. Varane is a really big one. Um, but again, the attackers are the ones that you want to focus on or cards that you think are going to get informs pretty consistently. Those are the ones that you're going to want to focus on in this game. So obviously, I've got some Malins. I bought some Malins yesterday. I'm looking at this card, hopefully to rise up this weekend, probably planning to sell him pre-game. Now, there's a little bit of risk there too. What if I sold Malin before the game and he scores a goal? Well, you know, that's where you have to kind of play and gauge your risk with some of these cards, which makes it really, really, really fun to trade with ones to watches and really risky, but mostly really fun. So I hope that answers a lot of your questions about how you can trade with ones to watch items in FIFA 22 Ultimate Team. We'll probably show a lot of more of this trading on the channel as we talk about maybe some of the moves that I make with them or moves that we see when a card does well, does get an inform. We'll talk more about it on the channel, I'm sure, in the coming weeks as games are played and these cards get upgrade so that's the video for today boys if you did enjoy smash the thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new it's been nathan foot account and i will catch you guys later peace